in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed I'm open before you, Lord. Do to me what you want. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, my assignment is to continue to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit and the Word of God to help you see that there are vast dimensions as far as the work of the believer is concerned. That Christianity is not just limited to having things and enjoying things and saying, oh, this is working for me. There are superior needs that even God has. The need to see the world evangelization. The Bible says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness. And you do not have to be a pastor. I have told you, prophetically speaking, God's end time program is separated into three groups there are prophetic intercessors then there are those who are sent into the cosmos then there are the kingdom financiers this is the tripartite formation of the end time army and every one of us here will play one two or all of these roles i repeat again prophetic intercessors these are people like anna the prophetess you may never see them out but they are the ones who pray the program of god to come listen carefully and then number two we now have those who are sent into Abarakata. i just sense a strong anointing very strong anointing as i just began to talk about this very strong anointing those who are sent that includes pastors, apostles, those who go. That includes entrepreneurs. Please do listen to my message, Redefining Revival. I have said that the revival that is coming is not about the pulpit alone. Because when you read the Bible, it was not only Elijah that walked. There was Daniel. There was Deborah. And all these mantles will find expression in this army. So it's important if you are Esther, don't go and take Elijah's training. It will corrupt what you will become. You must know, you must find your parallel in scripture and then follow the training that leads you. If you are Esther and you do Elijah's training, you will abort your mission in the palace. And if you are Elijah and you now do the training of say Gideon, no, you identify the kind of training by the similitude of the mantle that is following you. So if you are Esther, start looking for Haggai and Mordecai these are the two people that can make you become the Esther that marries Ahasuerus if you are Elisha make sure you do not make a mistake of looking for Haggai he cannot train Elijah he can only train Esther the challenge is that many of us are going through different patterns of training that does not suit what we are to become so prophetic intercessors that was a digression those who are sent into the mission field and then kingdom financiers the Josephs of Arimathea's the body of Jesus is hanging upon the tree and no every the prayer warriors ministry Anna the prophetess had finished the ministry of the disciples and the women had finished it was only the ministry of the kingdom financier who had influence and had a virgin tomb Joseph had influence with the government of the day and he had a virgin tomb. If Jesus were not buried in the tomb, we would never be able to say, Oh grave, where is your sting? And oh, oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? He had to be buried in the tomb. If we have only prophetic intercessors, 
the program of God cannot happen fully. If we have only people going to the mission field, this was the mistake that missionaries did when they came into Nigeria. Most of them did not have proper prophetic. There was no rich bank of prayer and intercession. And they just came with sincere evangelical zeal. And some of them, as soon as they, they landed certain lands, they did, were not even given an opportunity to preach. They slaughtered them and they destroyed them. Because before their arrival, by divination, the powers that be had seen their coming. And because they did not have capacity, they brought a sincere gospel, but they neglected the formation. Even Jesus, before his arrival, prayer had to go before him. Learn this pattern. You can use it for, this is true even for any church. The ministry of prayer, the ministry of doctrine, the word, and administration and leadership, then the ministry of kingdom financing. Every time this tripartite this tri pattern is compromised, there will be problem in that organization, there will be problem in that ministry. So if you have people who only pray in a ministry, they will never grow because the ministry of doctrine that matures believers is not there. You see that now? And then if you have a ministry that does not have support systems, Aaron's and horse that hold the hand of the man of God, they cannot hold the rod, but they can hold the hand of the one holding the rod. Is someone learning? So, my first admonishment in training you is that you must develop a systematized prayer life. It is, it is your assignment under God to study different models in scripture, different models through modern history. There are prayer giants who have joined the cloud of witnesses, men like E.W. Kenyon, E.M. Bounds. You can study their, their, their approach to prayer and then there are those that God has granted privilege we who are now alive and are making our contribution you can study the Bible says to follow them there are always them who through faith and patience have obtained the disciples said we are not just following Jesus for his crusade we want to follow him to that secret place and see what really happens that produces the miracles at the crusade ground the secret of great men is in what they do before the manifestations, not the manifestations. No. Number two, the second thoughts that I want to share with you in receiving training tonight is how to be built by the word. Let's do that very quickly. So, a systematized prayer life, a methodical prayer life where you allocate time or a range of times and as much as possible obtain grace and be disciplined to not compromise on those times and you will watch how your life begins to grow every time you invest in prayer something happens within your spirit man now the ministry of the word how to be built by the word let me tell you this there there are three dimensions as far as being built by the word is concerned just because you have access to the word does not mean it will build you no there are many people who are reading scriptures there are many people who have access to the word but they do not know how to be built by it in acts chapter 20 and verse 32 the bible says and now brethren it says i commend you to god and to the word of his grace the bible says that it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified it is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified it first builds you then it gives to you are we together in acts chapter 6 and verse 4 still the early church when there was problem between the grecian women over tables the apostle said get 12 people and would we'll ordain them and allow them to handle the matters of welfare but we will give ourselves continually the bible says to prayer and to the ministry of the word we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word i have found out listen and by the grace of god i have studied my bible and i have studied i I like to study many of the generals who have joined the cloud of witnesses. For some reason, 
I have come to a point to trust the purity of their experiences because they produce dramatic levels of results from their spiritual experiences and I've been able to distill three dimensions of your encounter with the Word of God in order to build you number one is the study of Scripture you want to be built by the Word you must study Scripture the Bible says study to show yourself approved unto God it didn't say wish it didn't say read it says study there is a difference between study and reading the purpose of reading is awareness the purpose of study is understanding there is a difference it will take more than awareness of scripture to be a giant in the spirit you must study scripture so that is the first way to be built by the word you must study scripture number two you must listen to scripture they are not the same the study of scripture and listening to scripture are not the same let me tell you according to the bible the work of the believer is dependent on your eyes and your ears and your mouth there are components in a believer that must participate in your growth many times you will hear the bible say faith comes by hearing it was not a mistake he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches if your ears are not participating in your word encounter i submit to you you cannot be built by the word please try to believe that i'm not deceiving you there are many people who study scripture but they are still not able to be built by the word holistically because they have ignored it i hope you know that before the study of scripture became a possibility it was first hearing holy men wrote before they wrote they had and they saw to write are we together now that model has not changed jesus spent time speaking to them in fact in the parable of the sower watch this the bible lists four kinds of soils and it says the seed is the word of god it says the seed that fell on good ground are those that heard the word they heard the word they received it they acted upon it and even though they heard it they still produced three levels of results 30 fold 60 fold and 100 fold if you are together if we are together say amen you must study scripture if you want to be built by the word number two you must listen listen to scripture and scripture related resources like teachings scripture and scripture related resources i have in my phone here um, an mp3 of everything jesus said in the bible from genesis to revelation everything the bible records that jesus said was distilled and sometimes that's all i listen to i want to hear the very words that the bible says from jesus and something happens miraculously it happens to your spirit man listen this is one of the ways that god trained us when we began with god listening those days people would put their cassette it was it was a model many people have compromised on it now you would almost see believers like mad people because once they were moving they, they always had their earphones listening to something a worship to usher you very strong worship and then maybe a message and then maybe a teaching you would almost know that this is a believers room because there will be a sermon playing while they are cooking a sermon play now we have ignored the place of hearing and that's the reason why the faith dimension it takes to walk mighty things is no longer there I submit to you you just hear the word allow it sink into your mind you don't just hear for memory you hear to transport it into your subconscious mind are we together yes hearing sometimes you can fall asleep while you are hearing and in the realm of the spirit the hearing continues and your consciousness is being trained now when you wake up you can be having a vision while you are awake and understand the dynamics because something was quickened in your spirit if you can be sleeping and yet still participate how much more when you are awake now god can speak to you as a preacher you can be standing here and you can be caught up in the spirit 
and your organs of interacting with that realm of possibility has been trained by hearing have you listened to a message before and then you fall asleep and the message is still playing and sometimes it now becomes graphic you are now acting out that message you may wake up under an intense manifestation of God's power I remember those days we, I used to listen to the entire 12 hour CDs of Charles and Francis Hunter how to heal the sick I would sleep and I would it would play again and again and again you put it on repeat until the battery runs down. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you. At age 12, he went to the temple. He was asking questions and listening. And when Satan came to him at age 30, he said, it is written. It is written. It is written. There's a man called Dr. Nasir Sadiqi. Many of you may have heard about him and he had a, a case I think it's called shingles or so years ago and he was diagnosed with an acute case it was a terrible case had brought out boils and swellings in his body and he was left for dead they had told him the doctors had concluded do your best it may not work and he made up his mind as a project with his wife that he was going to listen to scripture as he was taking drugs the same way they say take um, Panadol, you know, two in the morning, two in the afternoon. That was how he was listening to scriptures for two years non-stop. And that devil dried up and left him till today. He's still serving the purposes of God. You see, I told you that results are preachers. There is a sermon only results can preach. And when you see people who have gone through the valley of the shadow of death and have come out victorious, it is arrogance to argue with them. Are we together I know what the Word of God can do to a man I give you this as a project submit yourself to hearing scripture gather relevant teachings gather relevant materials especially the Bible on tape or mp3 It's free it's online go and get it and you listen to it it may not be easy for you to read the 66 books but you can hear the 66 books you can hear a chapter in 20 minutes and repeat it again in one hour you have had that chapter you will think nothing is happening until the day adversity strikes scriptures will shoot out of you like weapons it's true please listen to what i'm telling you most people are not built by the word because number one we do not study the word number two we do not listen to the word and then number three we do not speak the word that is the third level of being built by the word the confession of the believer according to scripture is a very powerful thing the confession of a believer the confession of a believer listen ladies and gentlemen you have to learn this the confession of the believer the Bible says let the redeemed of the Lord say so is that in your bible let the redeemed of the lord say so let the redeemed of the lord say so let the redeemed let the healed of the lord say so many people are not given to the confession of scripture and if you do not confess scripture let me tell you the truth there are many prophetic realities that may never happen in your life. The Bible says, ye have not because ye ask not. And then part of asking is not just to say, give me your faith declarations. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? In the name of Jesus, the Lord is the strength of my life. I declare that a thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right side. None shall hurt me. With my eyes shall I see and I behold the reward of the wicked. Are we together? The declaration of scripture. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The blessing of the Lord is at work in my life. I decree and declare, I am like my own Zion that cannot be shaken, but I abide forever. Do not make anybody make you believe that is just childish Christianity. Many have negated this to the detriment of their life. 
confession is so powerful Jesus calls himself the word the logos of God and I will not be silent I will always listen I want you to make it a culture to not just pray but know how the saints are built by the word I will repeat it for you one more time the study of scripture the hearing of scripture and word related resources and then number three my goodness my God the speaking of the word like the king that you are he says where the word of a king is there is power in the name of Jesus there is no death and dryness around my life I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit I am a burning and a shining light I go ever brighter even unto the perfect day you are putting your towel to go and bath you may not have had the time to study scripture listen if you are not growing in scripture it means you are lazy because at any given point you can do one of these three if you don't have the time to study you can have the time to hear if you don't have the time to hear you can have the time to speak there is no excuse to not be built by the word most people do not understand this tripartite approach that is the reason why they say I don't have time to study scripture so my word life goes down It's a lie all three should work together don't choose one don't say me I just confess uh -uh. you must study to have understanding you must hear to build your faith you must speak to release your faith to create those possibilities this is what the Bible teaches this is what the fathers did I remember those days I used to read T.L. Osborne's book and you want to get his book on soul winning and healing the sick a, a timeless eternal classic there is a group of, of a, I think groups of faith confessions that he wrote just joining scriptures to scripture are we together the favor of the Lord is upon me in the name of Jesus Christ Gentiles come to my light they are kings to the brightness of my my rising koinonia goes from glory to glory no decline for the bible says the path of the just is as a shining light the realm of the spirit is bearing witness to your responsibility of confession someone open your mouth in one minute and begin to make faith declarations even if it's only one scripture you have make that declaration in the name of Jesus when men say there is a casting down I declare that for me there will be a lifting up is someone praying the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he makes me lie down in green pastures the Bible says he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the path of righteousness, even for his name's sake. Someone is praying. Make that declaration. It's a faith declaration. You are making that declaration by the power of the Holy Spirit. Shanda brakate veretus kia tapalados, krata baka fraska di la parus gesevrende geberetus yata, e krata baratus kia talekatus yate. Alleluia, alleluia. Let me show you a scripture. I think that should be Isaiah eight twenty. Give it to us. Never forget this scripture for the rest of your life. I want us to read it together. Isaiah chapter eight and verse twenty. Everybody, please read. One to read. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. That means there is a way you speak as proof that light has entered you. That if we find you speaking not according to this word, the diagnosis is that there is no light in you. That means those who are the light, there is a way you speak not just a way you study 
I will never speak anything negative about my life. I don't care what the situation is. In the name of Jesus, I know while I look at the things that are I look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. The Bible says the things that are seen are temporal and the things that are unseen are eternal. Do you believe this? Walking in abundance, moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost. I am favored that I am walking in abundance. Moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost, I am favored. I am walking in abundance. Moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost, I am favored. This is what I believe. Before Jesus died, he confessed that he would die and he would come back to life. If he did not speak, he would have been surprised. He would remain in that grave. It was that word that guaranteed his coming back. What have you said about your destiny? You have empowered the forces of darkness. Because even Satan depends on the word of God to operate. Satan has to hear what God has said to know what to do to believers. Again, I declare I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, my hands are blessed. My life is a compendium of infinite possibilities. In the name of Jesus, this ministry goes from glory to glory, serving the purposes of the kingdom in power and in grace. Prosperity is my portion. The favor of God is at work in me. I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost, speed of the Holy Ghost I am favored I am walking in abundance moving with the speed of the Holy Ghost I am favored when Jonah was in the belly of the fish every other thing failed it was his words that brought him out in the belly of the fish no hope Jonah said every other thing I, I can't use my hand to fight the fish I can't use my brain to think my way out the only thing available that can bring me out is my speaking and that fish vomited him and the Bible said it was God that caused the fish to swallow him and Jonah used his word and came out of that situation to the point that Jesus used the testimony of Jonah as an adumbration of his death that means the same way it was the word that brought Jonah out Jesus made a declaration before he entered the belly of the earth and after three days he rose again the angels did not come because they wanted to come the angels are only mandated to respond to the word of God if there was no word in that equation the angels would not have a ministry can I tell you many people talk about angels you don't tell angels go and walk that's not how you instruct them you, the, the ministry of the angels is activated by speaking the word. The moment the proceeding word comes, they have an assignment. Let me show you something. Can, can I show you something? Revelations 1 verse 1. I'd like us to read it together. One to read. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his servants, which things must come to pass notice the revelation was what was given and the bible says he sent that revelation and signified it by his angel the angels respond to revelations so as i begin to speak in the name of jesus my tomorrow is great angels like the holy spirit have the power to go into your tomorrow they are not limited by time and space they can go there as ushers doing the bidding of the saints I really believe this when I begin my year I call every month by name and I give it a name I prophesy upon it this week in the name of Jesus I prophesy 
You are a week that delivers favor. My life is all about the purposes of the kingdom. I go about doing good, healing all day that are oppressed because God is with me. The anointing of the Spirit is at work in me. I believe in God's ability at work in me. You speak like this and watch how inferiority, complex, all of these things that came from our backgrounds, was it not words that programmed you into that state? They told you you would not become anything. They looked at you and said you are stupid. You are the black sheep or whatever kind of sheep. They, they look for a deformity around your life and name you. I like the man called Jabez. The mother used her mouth and programmed danger. Because of her pain, she called him Jabez. But that scripture starts with the end of his story. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. When you cannot use your hand, when you cannot use your brain, when you cannot use your feet, use your mouth. That every other thing can fail. I'm no longer slave to fear. I am a child. I'm no longer slave to fear. I am a child of God. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with, with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Zaria, hear me. Do not call yourself what God did not call you. He did not call you a failure. He did not call you weak. Man of God, he never told you you will fail. Your lowly estate may speak to you, but respond with the spoken word. Don't just study it, speak it. That in the name of Jesus, my generation will celebrate the hand of God upon my life. I may not look like it, but the mighty hand of God is upon me. His word is has work in my spirit. There is no limit to what I'm able to do. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Hallelujah. You do not need money in your bank to speak. You do not need money in your pocket to speak. You do not need a big house to speak. You do not need a mic to speak. You need understanding. Let this become your culture as you are trained. To study the word. To listen to the word. And to speak the word. I give you a guarantee. Obtain grace to live like this. And watch what your life becomes. It will look like you held a charm. The beauty and the glory of God that begins to emanate. You are not the first to stay in one room. We all stay there. You are not the first to whatever it is. Time will fail me to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Women who receive their dead back to life. Maybe there's someone outside. Maybe there's someone scattered across, following online across the globe. Can I speak to you? Do not allow anything bring you down. For as long as you are able to speak, let God be true and every man a liar. Do you believe this? This is how to train believers to be masters over life. So next time you see things not going your way, humanly speaking, you may feel that grief and you may lament, but always remember who you are. When you are done with all that lamentation and sympathy, you wear your priestly regalia and you lock up yourself and say, I know better than this. I have been trained. You open your Bible under an intense atmosphere of worship and let that worship be playing while you are studying and the spirit of grace will now unlock the skill. You see, Opening the book is your responsibility, but unlocking the seal is his responsibility. You don't have the power. The book must be both opened and the seal unlocked for you to see. Opening the book is your responsibility, but unlocking the seal. Then he will give you one rhema word. And with that word, you stand up and from the lips of faith, 
you begin to make declarations that don't make sense in the name of Jesus I activate the ministry of my destiny help us and whilst you are sitting someone who has forgotten you all of a sudden the book of remembrance is open is and it looks like it's just a a coincidence no we program possibilities in our lives based on the word let me give you the last one and then is someone learning No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work in me till Christ is formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. So I submit to his work in me till Christ is formed in me. Paul said, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. If you submit to the bidding of the Spirit, you will be surprised to see the kind of glory that will be revealed in you. The Bible says there are bodies celestial and there are bodies terrestrial. It says even among the stars, one differs from another in glory. You may not differ in size, but you can differ in glory. That glory that excels. Till the Christ is formed in Till your glory is revealed in me, your wisdom rests on me, your favor at work in me. So I submit to your work in me, till Christ be formed in me. Number three. The third and the final charge for this time that we have to share together is the value of spiritual empowerment. This is the last thing I want to talk about in our training and our equipping as we contend to lay hold on eternal life in experience. I have given you three keys that represent irrefutable kingdom secrets. There are ladders that transit men from realms of defeat and weakness that you become a tremendous person of capacity like the mighty men of David. The power of a systemic prayer life. Then how to derive value from the word through your study, your hearing, your speaking. Don't forget this. Then now number three, the value of of spiritual empowerment most people do not know that to fulfill our kingdom assignments and to advance the kingdom in general skill and human abilities can only take us so far when it has to do with advancing the purposes of the kingdom when it has to do with fulfilling your God ordained assignment please have this at the back of your mind that skill and human abilities can only go so far there is a limit to which skill can go there is a limit to which your ability can get to hallelujah this is where the supernatural comes in this is where the value of empowerment comes in Luke chapter 24 and verse 49 very quickly please Luke 24 49 he says and behold I send the promise of my father upon you but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power the one who is talking to them had given them information revelation but he said that is still not enough you tarry until you are endued with power you need more than a message you need more than an information you need power most believers have the message 
but they do not have the power to back and to validate the speakings they have been given in Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 I love this scripture the Bible says and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all great grace was upon them all hallelujah when we talk about the power of God when we talk about the anointing please understand that this is not an exclusive reserve to preachers pastors apostles prophets and so on. no the reason why pastors apostles and preachers seem to be the ones manifesting the anointing is because they are the ones who have the greatest consciousness of it because of the nature of what they do they are aware that if I do not have the anointing things will not work well but the anointing was never in the in the temple everything was anointed everything your business is value but it must be anointed to prosper supernaturally are we together now yes I have learned from scripture I have learned from history I have learned from fathers and I have learned from experience that your Christian experience is only going to be a recycling of pain and embarrassment if you ignore the value of spiritual empowerment. Please listen carefully. You do not have to be a preacher to desire spiritual empowerment. You see, you cannot produce God's dimension of result using the strength of the flesh. God's dimension of results cannot be produced using the strength of the flesh. He says, by thee, I can run through a troop. By my God, I can leap over a wall. How do you run through a troop as one man? Ask the mighty man of David. He stood in one position and brought down 800 people with a sword. And the sword refused to leave his hand. Can I tell you? Do not downplay what the power of the Holy Spirit can do in the life of ordinary men. We may not seem like much in ourselves, but not after the power comes. Samson, before the arrival of the spirit of might, would act like a normal human being. If Samson was macho, Delilah would not ask him the source of his strength. He was a mysterious man. When that power would come upon him, he would remove a city gate and climb a mountain with it and sit there. How about Elijah who ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Jezreel? The Bible is full of mighty men. Gideon and his 300 men. Jesus recommended the, the, the endowment with power to the disciples who would later become apostles. And he said, tarry. If Jesus tells people who he meant to tarry, I know that I taught you, but you'll be surprised if you just be on your way going, you will return back with sad testimonies. Tarry, I have taught you, and everything I've taught you is true, but tarry until you are endued with power. And then the Bible says, now when the day of Pentecost was fully come, I'm not sure they knew what they were expecting. They just got up that morning wondering, wow, Pentecost, so this Jesus will keep us waiting here. We're not going to go and celebrate this feast is the 50 now suddenly suddenly the bible says there was a a a mighty rushing wind a sound from heaven will you blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings will you blow 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 like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Upon that weak person, blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Upon that dying family, blow, blow. Blow like a mighty 
Genesis chapter 1 and verse 2 the Bible says the earth was dark and void watch the Spirit of God the custodian of the power of the Godhead the administration of spiritual power resides within the office of the Holy Spirit darkness tohu wa bohu, confusion and chaos and the Bible says but the Spirit hovered round the face of the waters now that power was available and God said and he saw that what he said was good and God said and he saw that what he said was good the ultimate test of spiritual power is found in verse 2 down to 4 when you say and you see and it appears and it is good you have power the zenith of spiritual power is the ability to declare when the centurion came to Jesus and Jesus said, I'm coming to your house. He said, no, I may not know much, but by reason of my military experience, I know this much. I am a ruler under the Roman government. And I say to one, go, and he can go. And to one, come, and he can come. I know you are under the authority of the government of heaven. Speak the word only. And he said, I've not found such faith. In other words, who taught you this? Who taught you that this is how the administration of power works in the kingdom? That from one location you can stand. One location you can speak to your house. One location you can speak to your family. One location from one location elijah did not need to go to a radio station from one location there shall be no rain over a period of three and a half years listen to me ministry is going to be frustrating if you do not value spiritual empowerment can i tell you the truth it takes power to be wealthy it's called the power to get wealth not just the common sense to get wealth it takes more than a right mind to be blessed and the bible says strong men retain wealth because retaining wealth is more serious than getting it the easiest part of being wealthy is getting it retaining wealth is proof of power it says strong men retain wealth it takes power to ward off the arsenals of darkness over your family that want to come and destroy everybody you've heard people they, they would say ah, our father was a pastor and he died without achieving anything say unto God how terrible art thou in your ways he says through the greatness of your power shall your enemies submit themselves are we together a man woke up one morning and just felt a slight pain very slight pain just like a needle pain around his legs and he just smiled it over and said what is this this pain and by the next time he would sit down he could not stand up straight again this is a true story and his um what they call this thing the kneecap started shaking and vibrating on his own i'm not a doctor i don't know what that meant and he called for help and all of a sudden they started diagnosing this man and they started bringing all kinds of things that from a medical standpoint i was told should take a long time before it degenerates to that state and it happened within a short time because it was sponsored by the presence of his spirit. Jesus said, ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound these 18 years. Can I tell you, sincerely, ladies and gentlemen, in this end time, hear me, if there is no manifestation of the possibilities of the kingdom in and through your life, the nations will not place a demand on your grace. I can tell you that. There is a growing hunger across the earth to see the power and the glory of God displayed once again. And power takes more than falling down and standing up. The ability to correct, the ability to create, to establish things in the lives of people, Isaiah 61 we're ready to pray the Spirit of the Lord is upon me the Bible says because 
the Lord had anointed me. The word anointed there is to legitimize, to ordain, to preach good tidings to the meek. Listen carefully. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted all by the anointing. To proclaim liberty to the captives all by the anointing. And the opening of prison to them that are bound all by the anointing. Verse 2. It says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn still by the anointing. To appoint unto them. I like this one. You know what it means to appoint? To name the day of their deliverance and victory. To appoint unto them that morning Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. I was teaching in Lagos and I told them beauty is a gift. You can give a man beauty. That you look at a life that has been battered and shredded into pieces and you come in the name of the Lord and give the person the gift of beauty. Rewrite the narrative of their family. No job, no rising, no nothing. And you come in the name of the Lord. He sent me to your home. He says, every house that you enter, if there be a man of peace, and they open the door for you, he said, let your blessing, your peace rest. That means no man of God and no saint of God walks empty. There is always something that goes with you. And when it is received, it can rest upon people. Is someone learning? I learned the value of spiritual empowerment. And I made up my mind that I was going to contend for it. As I read the books of T.L. Osborne, Charles and Francis Hunter, E.W. Kenyon, Papa Hagen, Reinhard Bonke, name them. Those we call God's generals. And the fathers and those that have set the pace for us that we had an opportunity to see their lives. Possibilities beyond imagination. I watched one of... Um, What's his name now? One of these, this, this, this healing evangelists. I can't remember his name now. He's not one of the popular ones. And there was a growth on someone's face and he just held it like this and peeled it. The same way you peel something. Like that. Just removed it. Ah. May God restore us. Oh. May God truly restore us. Because there are dimensions of power that these men accessed in the spirit. That we need to pray that the Lord will grant us that grace. Not for the purpose of self-aggrandizement. But that there is a need to validate the speakings of God once again upon this earth. Are you aware of the kinds of sicknesses? It's been a burden in my heart in the last maybe two, three months. That because God gave, I had an encounter and God began to speak to me about the restoration of the healing mantle back to the earth. I hope you know mantles do not leave the earth. No. They are there. But there is a level of alignment that the saints must assume. These men were people, you would read their stories and you would think it's an exaggeration. I know I was told that Archbishop Benson Ida holds of blessed memory. They once brought someone for him with a twisted face and to pray for the person and all he did was he told the person look up and when he looked up he said God this man was created in your image if this is how you look leave him like that hmm. don't stand before Pharaoh until you see the burning bush these were men who walked like gods upon the earth I remember watching one crusade of Charles and Francis Hunter and they were picking people out of wheelchairs as if they were relocating them to active him. And they were laughing. I said, look how frustrating this is. But a generation will arise. Some of you, you've seen it in your dreams. Some of you, you've seen it in your visions. It's time for the things that you have seen to come alive and to be made manifest in your life. If, do you know what it means if you carry the healing power Imagine your father and your mother. Think of your loved ones. Forget about a crusade ground. Just think of your loved ones. Someone suffering from prostrate, about to die. Someone suffering from cancer. And now you come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You step into that family with the confidence of a trained believer. Holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. 
Hallelujah. You know, many years ago in this area, I've shared the story. I, I think it was a lecturer, I can't remember now, somebody somewhere, and I went to go and pray. He was on a wheelchair. I think something happened, whether a degenerative disc or one of these medical conditions. And now they heard that God was using a gentleman called Joshua Selman. And with every sense of honor and passion, they said, please come. And I went there and they gave me their rapt attention. They gathered the whole family and the children. I preached a powerful message on the power of God. But the problem was that it was now time to demonstrate it. And, and the man on the wheelchair, um, um, you know, a man maybe in his 50s or 60s then, you, you could not say he did not have faith. He was paying attention, nodding and saying amen. And then I laid my hands on him. In the name of Jesus, this same Jesus that I've preached, sir, rise up. In the name of Jesus, absolutely nothing happened. Absolutely. I prayed, I prayed, I believed that I had faith. If it fails, it is never God. I took responsibility and went back. There is something I do not know. Let God be true and all men liars. I'm showing you the attitude of a winner. By the time you just have to roll, I'm not God. You will never be able to walk in certain levels of the anointed. You must shrug off the shame and go back. Open my eyes. There has to be something. The mortuary in Shika there. I have entered that mortuary to pray for a dead body. The anatomy lab in Ebi Uzaria. I've been left in that lab to pray for a dead body. And while I prayed, none of them came back to life. But I was happy I did. Because you never live the same. There is something about your fear. Leave, letting it out. What is making you afraid? There is a way you will stand and stare at it. You will find out it didn't have the power it claimed to have. Please listen carefully. We are wrapping up. I remember praying, fasting and crying and saying, Lord, I listened to John A.A. A. Allen. And A.A. A. Allen said he went to the Lord and prayed and cried and said, what is the secret of the miracle working power of God? Because he read his Bible and when he read it, he tried to practicalize what he read and absolutely nothing happened. And you see, in the world that we live today, People are already enlightened. It's not like before. You can go somewhere and tell people Jesus can move and he doesn't touch them. The next thing you see, a caught someone. And somebody will say you, you abuse them emotionally by lying to them. <laughs> Church, there's no time to play games again. We have to stay with God and hold on to the four horns of the altar until we carry substance, the substance of genuine, provable spiritual power. Hallelujah. I remember it was in this same Zaria. Then phones just started, mobile phones as we know. And then they, they started, um, it was a night call or something like that. When they called me and they told me that someone, they were waiting for a doctor to come. I don't know if it was Shika now or Barogiko, one of the medical um, places. And the person had had a, they mentioned the vertebra, the ones that were crushed or something. So they were waiting for someone, either someone to come from India or something of that sort. And they said, there is this gentleman again. I made up my mind. Please, I failed and failed till my ego died. In the year that King Uzziah died, there is something that must die for you to see. For as long as your purpose of ministering the anointing is to prove a point, you carry your ego and it blocks the power of God. Something must die. I got to a point where I said, if nobody gets healed, I will keep praying for people. My ego was stung and stung till there was nothing. If you're on the ground, there's nowhere to fall again. Usually that is the point you see his power. Because now the excellency of power will be of God. I remember, now looking from today, I do not know, I can't tell if I really, I don't know what kind of faith and courage would have entered me. True story. I picked the phone and this, I think it was a woman, I remember. 
she was wearing a, a neck collar and it was a complicated situation and I remember holding the phone it was in the night I said madam in the name of Jesus I want to pray for you and I boldly told her after all I said it many times and it failed I said I will keep saying it while I learn I didn't know that that day would be different five minutes to your lifting it will still not look like it you just continue I held that phone and I told her I said I'm going to pray for you I prayed a simple prayer no sermon no long stories a simple prayer and I told her remove your neck and this woman removed her neck collar and the only thing I remember hearing was that she ran and shouted Jesus and that was it by the next day you know how they come to people's homes like burial burial has happened that was how people if I did not see the x-ray the son had to come the father the husband now of the woman when he heard his wife was healed these are not unverified stories he did not believe it's impossible until he came and saw his wife they brought me the x-ray before after I said that's right truly spiritual power works Let me tell you this i remember that time when that news broke out in shika here the number of nurses and doctors that began to call please i have a pain here i've not shared it with anybody so i now found out people have problems but they will hide it for as long as they suspect you will waste their time the day they find what looks like genuine answer they will open up their scars sincerely the reason why it looks like men are not placing a demand upon your grace is nobody wants to open the deepest secrets of their pain when they know you will not solve it. That's why a patient can go to a doctor and somebody old enough to be that doctor's father, you will still pull for surgery. You will still, and you will not be ashamed because you know the doctor will take care of you. If they say, turn around, let them inject you, you will not say, I'm embarrassed, I'm a woman, you're a man. That is none of the doctor's business. You want to be healed of malaria, you do what is asking you to do. The reason why people cover up and don't speak is because it looks like in the church, it, it, they, are, they are tired of just saying amen without power. But the good news is that he's restoring again. God himself is restoring ancient mantles and is restoring genuine spiritual power. How will we go to the nations of the earth and preach Jesus to a bedeviled world that has several options? No. The Bible says Philip preached Christ in Samaria, Acts chapter 8 from verse 5. It says the people gave heed in one accord, with one accord, hearing and seeing, verse 6, the miracles which he did. Hearing and seeing. In the kingdom we hear and we see. We do not just hear, we see. I made up my mind that for as long as I am alive, and Koinonia hear me, for as long as you are part of this apostolic and prophetic ministry, it will take more than revelation. You must contend for this third dimension, the power of the Holy Spirit. The power of the Holy Spirit is not for Joshua Selman. This promise is unto you and to your children, your children's children, even as many as are far off, those that the Lord will call. When it has to do with the power of the Holy Ghost, great grace was upon them all. It's time to start going to your families. It's time to go to your, maybe your, your rooms, your offices, and now begin to manifest as light and salt indeed. This talk, we keep talking and shouting amen for nothing must come to an end. Can I tell you the truth? Everybody you see that God used mightily in Zaria, for those of you who just came to Zaria not long ago, the heritage that you celebrate in Zaria came about by the stories that you are hearing. Different stories from different men of God at points of encounters and the corresponding power that came upon their lives. My prayer is that Zaria will not stop remaining a training ground. This is a place where people came as ordinary people I remember those days you will see tiny ladies in the cold they will wear their stockings and carry their rechargeable in the night on their way to long tennis courts then most people will not know it now but you will see them with their tiny voices for hours praying in the spirit later on you find out that that tiny girl has now become a campus fellowship president fire like you will see somebody looking so small 
but you sit under that kind of anointing the service will finish you will not even know there is a generation that is losing out on the patterns celebrating all kinds of things it's not by going online it's not by doing all of these things you must stay the ministry of prayer many years ago in Zaria night time was a time of small recreation that graduates into prayer people gathered together and the gist was still spiritual talk it was not just like it was nonsense you start talking sharing things questions and from there before you know it people get into the zone of prayer that is how the mighty were made precious people do not lose that pattern you lose that pattern you will see the darkness and onslaught you see all this armed robbery and kidnapping that is happening in Zaria do not sit helpless as if you can do nothing you do not know that the people who do these things negotiate with the spirit to embolden them to come out and manifest nobody unassisted has that kind of courage to watch another human being and kill the person no until the saints rise and begin to define the realities that happen within your spiritual borders in the name of Jesus for darkness that thus far have you come no further shall you come shall you go I remember times when we had to stay and pray certain things out of this region you would hear crisis happening around Kaduna state and the rest and while we're interceding for that one to stop we'll stand and declare that it shall not be he says I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower now the challenge is that many people are only praying one over three will not get the job done you see where the mistake is because it is the excellency of the word in you that helps you to pray effectively now many people ignore the word they ignore the power of the Holy Spirit and all people do is to pray and it is largely praying amiss a dissipation of intense spiritual energy but very little result there must be this tripartite balance is someone understanding this he is brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine from darkness the holy ghost is brooding over every darkness hear me before students get admission whether to abu or the polytechnic anywhere we used to pray in advance before they arrive we begin to pray and intercede father they are coming from several families they are welcome regardless whether it's from a family of idolatry you send them here some of them as soon as they land from day one they step into a church having a program just to stroll not knowing that prayer had been put to direct them and some of those people later became fellowship presidents some of them today are men and women of God serving the purposes of God but it is not just limited to producing pastors there were people who it was the church that showed them their direction today they are entrepreneurs advancing the kingdom in many regards they came from a family of low self-esteem came from villages of all sorts but when they sat down under a teaching priest line upon line a sound exegesis of scripture they now began to understand who they were in Christ and the possibilities that would come by reason of this way life and things began to change never lose that pattern if you're a campus fellowship president here hear me whilst you study and do what you do remember that you have an assignment do not leave this region without replacing yourself. No. Otherwise, the devil will be patient and allow a group of vibrant, serious people to leave. And then you will find out that all that is left is nothing to write home about spiritually. This is what you see happening in many circles. Vibrant people, but there is no succession. No raising men and women of fire. It is the reason why you see us continue to invest in training because for as long as Jesus lives this place will remain a training ground where God is raising people you see these are little children some of them were dedicated right here and now you see them as small as they are while we are praying they are joining to pray too watch what happens to them by the time they become teenagers they will be light years they would outdo the things the little that we have done and that's how it's supposed to be 
let me charge you before we pray finally parents you have a role to play in preserving this revival young people you have a role to play in preserving this revival ministers of the gospel we have a role to play businessmen we have a role to play this is a time where everybody must put his hands on deck from Zaria and around Zaria to the ends of the earth Jesus must be revealed and Jesus must be glorified we will never allow darkness to prevail we will never allow decadence kidnapping assassination right now people cannot go home freely in the night again what kind of thing is that because some teenager somewhere under the influence of a wicked demonic spirit let's submit our prayer request and then we'll do the impartation we've taken time please begin to pray in the spirit right where you are and submit your prayer request to the person at the left or the right aisle seated to you any one of them preferably maybe the left Please submit your prayer request while you pray. All the overflows, those outside, those across. Please make sure you attend to those who are around Second Equa. Make sure that they are given an opportunity to submit their request. Submit your request while you pray. The Bible says to be anxious for nothing. It says, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Oh Lord, set my heart on fire for you, for you. Oh Lord, will you put my life in order? For you, I want to know you, Lord. I want to know your ways. I Just one prayer request. Father, I am available to be used mightily by you. I pray that you will use me like never before. Open your mouth and pray. Whether in ministry, whether as a lecturer, whether as a student, whether as a husband, a wife, a father, a son, a daughter, a career person, a professional, open your mouth and pray. I am available. I am available. I am available in the name of Jesus. I am available by the power of the Holy Ghost. I am available as you raise mighty men and women, as you anoint men for this end time kingdom assignments. I am available. Find a vessel in me in the name of Jesus Christ. Now pray and declare. I obtain grace to be prayerful. I obtain grace to be systemic even in my prayer. I obtain grace to be a student of scripture. Are you praying? I obtain grace by the power of the Holy Ghost to listen to scripture, to listen to teachings, I obtain grace to speak the word, fake declarations that speak and program possibilities over my life. Declare the power of the Holy Ghost upon my life, the power of the Holy Ghost upon my ministry, the power of the Holy Ghost 
upon my family the power of the Holy Ghost upon my body the power of the Holy Ghost upon my children is someone praying the power of the Holy Ghost upon my academics the power of the Holy Ghost upon my career in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare it is not by power not by might it is by the Spirit hallelujah hallelujah so this is how it works when the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you the Bible says Christ is revealed as the wisdom of God and it is revealed is revealed as the power of God when the anointing comes upon you it can translate to wisdom guiding you to know what to do and it can translate to the force that corrects every anomaly in your life hallelujah our time is gone we're going to spend just about maybe five minutes max ten by the grace of God I like you when you're ready with the request please bring them and then I will speak over your life I promised yesterday that I was going to pray for the sick we may not have time to take testimonies unfortunately because of our time but I will speak over your life then I'll pray over the request we'll do the final impartation and then we're done but hear me ladies and gentlemen if there is anything about this life that you are seeing I'm a product of God's grace but it is also because I place value on the power of God the ministry of strategic prayer being built by the word and then embracing the embracing the ever increasing empowerment of the spirit because you see yesterday's excellence will be tomorrow's mediocrity just because you received fire yesterday does not mean it will suffice for the rest of your life some of you you are here you came for this meeting yesterday and today weary dried up in your spirit but the Bible says until the spirit be poured upon us from on high then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful ground vine and a fruitful vine be counted for a forest. There is no limit to what the Holy Spirit is able to do. I see several of you just standing across as far as you can get. Wherever you are, I want you to release your faith as I pray. You will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your soul. Truly you will be changed. His glory will be revealed when the Spirit takes over your Like you to stretch your hands towards this request as we pray this is the most accurate representation of the needs of everyone Jesus said it is the sick that need the doctor some of these needs here represented are life-threatening issues some of these issues represented here are issues of shame and embarrassment I like you to declare these that I see these Egyptians I see them no more forever. I'm going to bow my knees to pray. You don't kneel, you just pray. Just for two minutes to lay my hands upon them. Everybody, whether you are outside, you are falling from across the globe, stretch your hands and begin to pray. Pray in the spirit and decree and declare.
the name of Jesus. Father, the Bible says, Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come. In the name of Jesus, I bow my knees in partnership with all the graces here represented. And we declare under this corporate anointing that every request that has been placed before the Lord here, let it become your testimonies now. Shout a louder amen. Let it become your testimonies now. In the name of Jesus. Every life-threatening situation here, I decree and declare you become a testimony now every spirit that is back of the tragedies here represented by the blood of the eternal covenant we curse you and we declare a release for God's people and finally in the name of Jesus prophetically I stand upon this request every challenge that has risen above you we bring it under your feet we bring it under your feet we bring it under your feet in the name of Jesus Christ now very quickly everywhere inside or outside I want you to place your hand if you came here sick or you brought someone sick lay your hands we're out of time but I have to do this Lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest and you can stand in for someone. It doesn't have to be for yourself. There's someone that comes to mind you can stand in to receive from them, for them. The centurion stood for his son. Jarius stood for his daughter. I sent my word and it healed your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. Place your hand there. I want to pray for you. He gave us the power and the authority to declare upon the sick and that they be healed. Now in the name of Jesus, every spirit and every devil of infirmity that has plagued families plagued destinies in the name of Jesus Christ and by the blood of the eternal covenant I command that that spirit leaves your body now I command that that spirit leaves your body now now I declare to you in the name of Jesus be healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed now be healed now my God there's such a strong healing anointing be healed now I condition be healed now ear conditions be open now bone conditions in the name of Jesus be corrected now blood conditions genotype dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete katos, kete branda kata bako tos koto preke teke le kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.